So let's let's get started. So I have some head sheets behind here, and we're going to kind of break this haircut down into almost a front and a back. So we'll separate a radial section from ear to ear, and then we'll also have a section coming right down to an offside part. So we'll have a heavy side in the front and a lighter side too. We're also going to be doing this cut from the internally out. We won't start with the perimeter. We'll start from the internal of the cut. And where we're going to determine that is from our side part. We're going to take a section and we're going to start it right at the crown back here. And this is going to be kind of your pivot point where we're going to be doing the whole cut from. So we'll go from short to long out and then we'll be doing diagonal forward sections kind of coming down in that manner as we work our way out. So let's get started. So as always, hair needs to be wet. The key aspect to this cut too is going to be head position. You're going to be doing this cut from the front of your client, a lot of it. And you want their head to be tilted down. This is going to help us remove a lot of the internal weight while maintaining the length. Obviously, we're going to be using our straight razor. So yeah, kind of determine where you want this, the internal layers to be. But looking at the length, our mannequin has a lot of, pretty long hair actually, so. Let's take all of that off. So go ahead and kind of establish your guide. You're going to be using a really kind of open stroke with this too. And you're going to be combing the hair down and just kind of coming all the way out to your perimeter length. And there is our guide. So we're going to start on the light side in the front. First section is going to be a diagonal forward, and we're just going to kind of radiate out from this um, pivot point on the top. And just kind of cut out towards the length and the perimeter. Make sure your sections are nice and clean. If the hair is wet too. Always want the hair to be wet when we're using the razor. And just kind of work your sections coming off the head. Before you take that next section, can we get in there and have a closer look at how much work you've done there with those radial partings? Yes. So, yeah, and probably about right in there. And you can see these are starting to slope 
down as we work our way back to the um, end of that section. Could we take a second to show the head sheet that you are basically demonstrating currently? Yes, and we are basically right here working our way down on the lighter side in the front. So right down in here. This is a great cut to do on long hair that's super thick because it takes out a ton of interior weight, opens it up. If anybody has any questions, I'm here to support Kent, so go ahead and type them into the comments and I will share them with Kent so that he can answer them for you. Kent, do you ever do this haircut with scissors? No, I don't like to do this haircut with scissors. I think the straight razor gives much better shaggy effect. And it allows you to broach those distance kind of from short interior layers to long length in the perimeter really quickly and easily. Much, much better than scissors would do. So now, we're going to move on to the front heavy side. Okay. And we're just going to yeah, incorporate some of that old guy and take another sliver out from that pivot point. heavy side in the same fashion. How often in general are you changing your razor between clients or with clients? So I pretty much change my razor with just about every, every single client. I mean, um, and especially now, under these some circumstances, I, I would change it with, with every client. Okay. Just to, be, just to be safe. Is there ever a need to change the razor throughout the client? Absolutely. If you feel you're working on a ton of thick, really coarse hair, and you feel that blade getting dull, absolutely change it out. I, um, I like my razor to be sharp. I do not a fan when I feel it pulling at all. Um, and you can kind of feel like, just like when your scissors are dull too, like it's uh, sharp, sharp as, sharp, sharp as you can get is the best. Maybe we can turn her after this cut. Maybe spin her 180 degrees. Not to say that. Their 
head being tilted down is important. So how much is she tilting her chin? She's tilting it down quite a bit. I mean, you want them to be kind of like tucked, tucked Let's in see there. See if I can shove the angle. Yeah, if you guys can see that there. What would happen if she was holding her head straight? You wouldn't be able to remove as much, as, as much weight. And you wouldn't be able to get this nice kind of like downstroke either. You would, uh... want to get in and see that other side there for you. Let's move her so that we can show that angle. Looks great, I can already see all the texture bouncing up. So once you get the front worked out, and you can see like how like soft waves, how this immediately just kind of starts bringing all that texture up mm -hmm. and is a so can you show us where the shortest pieces are currently? Yeah, so they're right up in there, in the top. The shortest pieces are obviously going to be right, right here in the crown. So everything kind of just radiates out from, from this, going out to the perimeter. So your shortest pieces will always be right in that pivot, that pivot point area. So once you, yeah, I got the front done, what we're going to do next is kind of establish the fringe. So you want the head to come back up for that. So you'll just take kind of your part. And what we're going to do is just kind of take this out, this kind of corner out on both sides. And you can see this in this head sheet, kind of right here is what we're, what we're going for. Okay. And this is how we're going to tie, really tie the front into the, the back. So I usually like to start around the chin. I'm going to start with the white side first. wet her down a little bit. I'm just going to kind of, yeah. Knock this in. And is this sort of personal discretion based on the client's It is, needs? yes. This would all kind of depend on their consultation, where they want those pieces to start, where they don't want them to start. I 
once they get the razor for these front pieces, the fringe, I think is an excellent tool because especially with long length, it allows you to bridge those gra gaps from short to long like nothing else. Nothing else will be able to even come close. Now, yeah, once you get your kind of your fringe line established in there, we're going to hop on to the back. So let's see where her shortest pieces are now. Now they're kind of just, yeah. Right. A couple inches below the chin? Chin, yep. Okay. Uh huh. It's cute. So the back. We're going to have the head once again tilted forward. And you're going to be doing most of the back from the front also, once again. And what we're going to do, you can see the head sheet on the back, we're going to start at that pivot point and then come down to the center of the nape. So you will we'll have a slight angle right there. And then we're going to be pulling, over directing everything to the front. And what this is really going to allow us to do is maintain the maximum amount of length, especially in the back, as we pull to the front. And we're going to use our same pivot point up at the top and kind of take radial sections. Coming down. And we're going to comb this to the front. And cut it to that guide, that kind of fringe line guide. You're even on the top up here, almost going to be combing it over the top of the head to get that maximum over direction. Removing any of those tags or and once again using a kind of a, a really open stroke with your with your razor. What does the open stroke do? It just a, it gives a lot more texture, it creates a lot looser of a line. Closed stroke's going to make it more weighty. And once again, we're kind of going for a, a shag here, kind of a shaggy look. So we want that movement and all those, that texture in there. Kent, when you're looking to buy a razor, is there a big difference between them? How do you pick out the razor? And maybe you could show the razor that, you, that you're currently using. No, we just have the kind of the standard feather clear razor. It, um, I think it's a great hair cutting razor, um, just the, the length of it. You have plenty of space to move your finger on it. Of course, on erosiopro.com, you can find all these razors and tools. Joe was asking if this is an Erosio razor. This is, this is, yes. You can get this on their, on their website. They have some handcrafted wood ones, but the basic frame shape of it is the same. They, they all take the same blades, the pleater blades. So, uh, yes. And since we're talking about razors, maybe it would be good to mention why you're using a straight razor versus one with the guard on it. So the guard, I feel like it, it dulls the hair. You just don't have as clean of a cut. 
it's um, it's got a guard on it, so it's a uh, it makes for for beginners. Um, they are they are nervous about not using the guard, and of course, everyone's scared about cutting themselves. And my response to that is, you you cut yourself with your scissors. You you will cut yourself. Like it's um, just part of it. Get your head over it. Um, you absolutely want to handle it safely and stuff, and be mindful of it. But once you get used to it and accustomed it, accustomed to it. You'll, you'll never use a guarded blade again. And like I said, you can find these razors on Arojo Pro. You can also find all the class offerings on Arojo Pro as well. The razor cutting classes are all listed up there. One of the reasons I was so attracted to Erojo and became an ambassador was because of their Erojo's focus and commitment to education. Nick has gone up above and beyond and absolutely Erojo is, I think, the industry leader when it comes to education and on cutting and, and all this. And going out to New York with them is absolutely worth your time. The instructors out there are wonderful. Like I said, the lovely Carmel Lawless taught us this haircut. And she's, yeah, among any, many wonderful haircuts. So like I said, yeah, we're kind of just combing all this forward, even kind of on the top over, over the head. And you'll find as you work yourself to the center of the back, you'll be taking this. off less and less hair, too. Hold on just a second. Let me show this real quick here. Okay. So you're basically approaching the center there in the back. Yes. And you'll be just naturally removing less and less. Once again, make sure that hair is always wet. And whenever you're switching, like to like wetting the hair down, you always want like the razor. Always, when you're not using it, it always has to stay closed. Like it's, um, you wouldn't even set it down open. Yes. We've learned the hard way, unfortunately, over the years, haven't we? Yes, we have. An urgent care visit in the middle of your workday is never fun. Still following the same guide? Yes. Yep. You're just kind of running out of hair back there, basically, though, huh? Pretty much, yeah. We're only taking kind of that kind of corner off at this point. And you can kind of, yes, just see how it's allowing it to kind of just all up. Speaking from personal experience, I have now had this haircut done on me, I think, three times, and my stick straight hair bounces up into defined waves, almost, and um, it gives me lots of movement on my boring hair. How about we spin her completely around so you can... Everybody keeps getting shots of the living room here. Yes, better, thank you. So now we're starting on the, uh, kind of the, I guess you would, what you would call the heavy backside. I 
and we're still we're still just radiating out from that top pivot point. There's some basics to the razor too, keeping you safe. And one of them is when you are working, you always do kind of have it back here in the, in the cradle at the base of the V, and you rotate it, and right then it's kind of what we call locked. This is like pretty a safe position. You won't be able to, won't slip on you. And then when you go to cutting, you switch out to your finger and then you start using your finger to move the blade. So what would this effect, what would this haircut be like on finer hair? I would, I don't know if I'd recommend this haircut on finer hair because you just don't have the um, integrity with it and everything be going from short to long. So you may not have the uh, desired results. I really like this hair on like more thicker, medium to thick heads of hair because it does take out so much interior weight and bulk and um, just gives it a lot more movement, opens it up. You do that on a fine head of hair, you may be taking all their hair out. So, uh, okay. yeah, I would, I would not recommend this on fine, fine heads of hair. So medium to thick. And you can see how that first section in the back, when we kind of come over the head into the front, we have all that to take out. Yeah. And as we move back, that's going to become less and less and less. Adjust our angle just a little bit here, if that's okay with you. Give us a little bit more room of that. Does that still work? Mm-hmm. Now, what about on super curly hair? Yeah, and curly hair too. I don't know. It works really good with like loose curls, soft waves. But on super curly hair, you're going to get so much recoil with the curls that the um, results might be too unpredictable. Mm. So I would I would stick away from like really really curly hair, okay. and, but like loose loose soft curls, you can definitely push this cut into. Especially if their hair has some just natural soft waves and already body, it's going to really bring that out. Lots of good mornings and hellos coming from all over the country, clients and hairdressers alike, and maybe some family too. And yeah, we're just going to work our way back. back sections forward. This really is kind of a, I think, easy haircut. That, that's what I love about it. It's quick, it's easy, and the effects are, it's a great result. Clients love it. I feel like so many people are looking for shaggy layers right now, whether they wear their hair long or short, it's definitely in trend. And the fact that you can do this so quickly, remove all that length and uh, weight is um, impactful. So a question came up that maybe I'll answer and it's about being an ambassador salon. And the question is, is Arojo our only product line and how long have we been an ambassador salon? 
So Arojo is not our only product line, though it is one of our main product lines. We have a strong focus on Arojo in the salon for sure. Um, we have a couple of other product lines that we feel complement each other versus being in competition with each other. And we've been an Arojo Ambassador Salon for, I want to say, four years now. Four years, yes. And mm -hmm. we joined the art team, I believe, two and a half years ago. Yeah, about two and a half, three years ago. Right around something. when they launched the program, yeah. yeah. And there are a lot of perks that come along with being an Ambassador Salon. Um, one of those big perks being education. So it's, um, I know Arojo is um, still shipping product and you can probably catch somebody there at the office. The salons have been closed, of course, and New York City hasn't quite opened up yet. So I don't think that they're taking hair appointments, but if you do have questions about the product line or the ambassador program, definitely let us know. We'll make sure that we get you in touch with the right people to answer your questions. Yeah, it's looking like New York's probably going to be one of the last, last to open. Mm. I think, I think most, most everyone after today is going to be open. Like I said, we in Colorado opened on the 9th of May and um, have been back for almost, almost a month now. And it's a, it's a brave new world out there. Yeah. <laughs> I know so many are, are ready to go back to work and, and, um, and really excited to get back to their clients and their normalcy. But the truth is that it, our, our old normal is, is, um, is, gone. is gone for now. And yeah. so I tell people, don't rush it. If you don't have to rush it, don't rush the reopening. And for your hairstylist? out there you're going to be tired <laughs> over the next couple of weeks yeah working in masks is exhausting the extra protocols is also exhausting it's well worth it it feels good to be back it but is. there's I nothing really the extra protocols i'm finding per client is an extra five ten minutes yeah. of, of cleaning up sanitizing and everything it really is not that not that bad Spending 10 hours in a mask, though, is um, challenging. So once again, we're kind of in our final section in the center of the back here. So kind of all this is coming over the head and forward. We've got somebody, we've got Karen here from the UK, and her question is, when did you close? I'm in the UK, and they're not reopening until, the, until July 4th. Wow. Well, um, we closed, I think our last day was the 18th of the March, 18th, or believe, it was uh, the 17th, 18th, or 19th. Yeah. It was right in the middle of March. And, you know, every state in the U.S. has seen different things um, through this time. And Colorado, um, I feel as though Colorado managed it well. Um, they closed us early, and they didn't even attempt to reopen for six weeks. We stayed closed. So um, other states tried reopening. They kind of kind of handled it on a week by week basis. And I'm really glad that we were able to just shut down and know that we were gonna be closed for six weeks and, and do what we needed to do in that time. And so, um, but I, I'm not sure about the UK. I would imagine that they're probably quite a bit stricter and probably maybe even a little bit smarter about the way that they're handling things. So, um, but that's, that's a long time to be closed, Karen. Um, did you close in the middle of March as well? So now that we've kind of taken everything over the front, the top, we are going to kind of just check the front by combing everything over the top. Okay, what are you looking for here? So we're just looking for kind of the, the any like, I would say unsightly kind of like tags or points. Because you don't want to take, you don't want to make the, your perimeter too blunt. This is, uh, like I said, it's supposed to be a shag. So if you got something that's like three inches longer than the rest, you obviously want to take care of. And that's all we're going to really do with the perimeter. It's just kind of like almost like spot check it. Spot right check, now. okay. Tilt your head up. All right, let me see if I can get the best angle for this. 
Oh yeah, Karen said they've been close since March 23rd. That is a long time. I feel your pain, girl. I would say do your best to stay patient. You wanna be 100% prepared before you reopen. You know, physically prepared, emotionally prepared. You're gonna need new supplies. Yeah, that's a tough one. Wow, so that's all of April, May, June. Three and a half months that they'll have been closed. What I'm doing is just combing everything pretty much down to natural fall. Okay. And we're just going to kind of go around the perimeter. Okay. And yeah, I've got to just kind of like detail it out. And uh, Looks awesome. You'll find, especially in the back here, that really the length is pretty, pretty minimal. You mean the last little bit that you need to take off is minimal? Yes, like in the... Uh... Pretty much the back center here. Like you, you'll, you'll, won't be taking much off of that. Right, right in here. Yeah, looks good. Once I get it, I said we're, we're trying to maintain the length with this, so it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a great haircut for that. The clients with long hair, they're like, I want a lot of layers. And, um, but I want my length too. It's, uh, this is a good one. So, what I love about this haircut too is how easy it is to style. You can let this air dry, you can let it diffuse. I'm going to use, we prepped her with some hydro mist, which is a great styling prep packs in moisture, seals the cuticle down, evens the porosity out, it's a natural humectant. Here in Colorado, we have dry, 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 so anything bringing moisture into the hair is always good. And then for styling, we're just going to use some volume foam on her, which lifts, thickens, and supports. It creates body and bounce. The more you use, the more you volumize, the more volumized. It's got a lot of grip. I do like to apply it just with the comb, kind of just comb it in there. I think even product distribution is integral to your overall results with proud product. So, big, another big reason why I like to comb it into the hair. Now, next, what I'm going to do with her is I'm just going to kind of shake it out. Same with the client. I'll just kind of go in there and shake the hair out. And I'm just going to start taking mannequin head of hair. It's a little bit harder, but on obviously natural hair. When you kind of shake this out, you'll see kind of how it's just clumping together, coming together. I like to just follow those clumps, take kind of big chunks and twist them up like this. Loosely, all over the head. There's really no rhyme or reason to this other than how the hair is clumping together. I don't, yeah, I don't think you have to do one forward, one back, left or right. And after you've created these kind of clumps all over the head, you can let it air dry, or you can diffuse it dry. Obviously diffusing is going to give her a little bit more um, lift. 
air drum, I'm going to make it a little bit more softer and not as much volume. Yeah, you can really see that wave just bouncing right up. And this is obviously going to enhance that wave and that uh, texture. Here in Colorado, since it is so dry, we can, a lot of people can really get away with letting the air dry mm -hmm. and do, I mean, they walk outside and it's dry in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this would air dry super cute. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. And yeah, we'll just kind of dry in these clumps and then when it's dried all the way, it will um, just kind of pull apart and you'll have this nice separation movement in the hair. Doesn't look like it needs to be particularly polished. No, it's, it's a shag. So we're not going for a perfect graduated bob blown out or anything. It's, a, it's supposed to be loose, messy, shaggy. So, we're going to show you Carissa, who we earlier let this dry up and clump up. Do you want to hold the camera? So, and what she's going to do is take some refinish, dry shampoo. Hey, everyone. And she's just going to kind of pulse this throughout her hair. Refinish is... Am I in a good angle? Yes, a great dry shampoo, dries clear. It's got aloe vera in it, soothes, softens, and moisturizes. It's great at soaking up those excess oil. And you would just, yeah, kind of take sections like she's doing and just pulse it in there. By the way, I got this haircut last night. So yes, and it's a... Uh, air dry. Uh, just this morning after I washed it. I haven't picked it out yet. And then we're going to add some fiber, which is a pliable fibrous paste. It's great at creating bulk. It's a great... Root bus booster and has great style memory. So all she's going to do is just yeah apply a little dab, emulsify it all in her hands, get it all spread it out, and she's really going to work it into her root to get her roots to kind of really pop up. And you can just see how those are just it's just lifting that root right up. And you see the fibers falling down. Yeah, and I think most people think of fiber as more of a men's product or whatever, but this is a great finishing product creating texture. How am I looking? Looking, it's looking great. So I'm just gonna kind of show you in here, right at the roots, how that kind of lifts it all up. And yes, the uh, texture it gives, go ahead and turn a little bit. And then you can see in her hair, the interior, kind of the layers. Sorry that there, there's a glare, I'm trying to minimize. And this is how I style my hair. I clump it together in the morning with product in it, let it air dry, and then I pick it out when I get to the salon. You can see how it gives it a nice separation. And yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there's, there you kind of have it. There is your Shatterbox. Shatterbox. Yes. Um, which, once again, I was taught at the Rojo Academy. Great, great place to learn, continuing ed for... Yeah, cutting and styling. And yes, it is a long layered shag done with a straight razor. Thanks, so, Michelle. Does anybody have any questions for Kent before we part ways here? Yes. And let's go ahead and take another look at the head sheet so you guys can get a kind of good look. For at anybody it. that's still good about writing up their head sheets, so important. You want to explain them? So, yes, this is the kind of the top of the head, obviously. 
There's your pivot point again with the uh, diagonal forward kind of radial sections radiating out from that. And then you would go to the front, create kind of your fringe, bring everything to the front, over direct, cut your fringe in. And then in the back, you would just over direct everything forward to the front with the person's head tilted down. Great. And Wonderful. Thank you, Kent. Yes, and I hope you guys find this useful. Um, any questions? Uh, yes, I will be fielding them. And yes, um, yeah, it was great, great, great seeing everyone. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And yeah, stay safe. All right. Anybody, if you leave your questions in the comments, we'll check back and make sure we get them answered for you. This video will be available on Erojo's page um, and indefinitely, I believe. We'll, we'll make sure it gets saved. Okay. Thanks, Kent. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody.